I'm proud to be selected for the 2020 Hamilton Literary Award for Fiction. The Sand Flea, a translation of an excerpt from the Hindi tale, Greetings to the Winter by Ramayan Vishnu. There was a wise man who condescended to be at peace with life. He naturally expected life to reciprocate. To achieve this end, he would sit all day with his legs crossed and negotiate intensely with his surroundings, struggling to find a successful method of communication. He felt, and most would agree, that it was a frightful shame for the vast existential knowledge of the animals to be wasted because of humans' inability to listen. But in these endeavors, although he, de he deigned to be at peace with life, he inevitably failed. Perhaps the blame was to be shared mutually, human deafness and animal muteness. The wise man's only means of sustenance were uh, rotten cabbages, which a farmer allowed him to take from his tiny plot in exchange for prayers and benedictions. In every other way, he considered himself sufficient unto himself. One day, a sand flea, barely visible among the tree-like hairs of his left leg, seemed to be on its way to heeding the vibrations of the wise man's soothing chant. Perhaps the cosmos was ready to strike up a conversation at last. The wise man rejoiced and clapped his hands in delight. Whether out of fright or pure malice, the sand flea bit into him. A reflex action snapped the wise man's hand and it struck the vicinity of the bite. A tiny circle of blood served to positively identify the former tiny crustacean. The wise man felt a swoon at the thought of what he'd done. He rubbed the offending hand compulsively in the sand, rubbed it till it was raw and bleeding. That helped little. The flesh was gone, but the guilt remained. There was no doubt that he had been branded a murderer, if not by the gods, then by his own conscience. Following all the appropriate rituals, he immolated the pitifully squashed remains of the flea and passed the night in prayer and contemplation and the muttering of chants. But the wise man's thoughts always came back to the same thing. Did the bite justify the murder? It was in the nature of the sand fleet to bite. Was it in the nature of the human being to perish the idea? He concluded that to murder was a personal matter, pure and simple, and no way could the blame be shifted to an entire species or pattern of genes. He saw within himself all his dreams of communication, he realized, were but a mask, a mask concealing the smug murderer beneath. What choice had he, he thought, but to die, and perhaps be fortunate enough to be reborn as one of the murdered, to, be, to, to begin the cycle once more so that he too might someday find himself crawling up a wise man's leg, this time towards a conversation. Several weeks later, from, weak from fasting and lack of sleep, he was bitten by a cobra, not overly puzzled by the fact its victim made no attempt to avoid it, who in fact went out of his way to fall across the snake's path. The wise man, writhing for a few hours in agony, made peace with himself and died serenely. Because of the total and absolute devotion he'd shown to the principles of his life and his finely honed ability to accept the consequences of his every action, the gods took his position at face value and granted him the wish to be reincarnated. But not as a sand flea, as one might surmise, rather as a rotten cabbage. After all, he'd been killing them for a much longer time. Thank you.